Hi there, this is Mike Smalley with Elderly Instruments. We took a trip to the Martin Guitar Factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Our rep, Brendan Hackett, showed us around. We saw from start to finish how these amazing guitars are built. We started in the sawmill. Welcome to the sawmill. This is where everything begins. Of course, it begins in the forest and we, there's a lot of processes that happen before the wood gets here. But this is where it starts for us. We've got a bunch of fingerboard material here. They're stickered to make sure that there's constant airflow between these pieces of wood. So even when they're just sitting, rather than having them dead piled and having no moisture being relieved from that wood, you at least have at least have the opportunity to get some of that out while while it's being stickered. Certified mahogany, certified sipo. Over here on the other side, we see the burlap bags that Indian rosewood is stacked in, and that's how we receive it from India. There's a bunch of pieces in here. So these, these might be fingerboard blanks. They're, they're oversized, so we're gonna do the final processing. But all, the, all of the backs, all of the sides, fingerboards, they bridges, in. they're coming in in these bags. There's a couple of cool machines back here for making ribbon lining. I'll show you a piece right here, but this is all cut out on these machines. So it's triangulated, cut into strips, and also curved all on one machine. Here's ribbon lining material before it goes through the machine. So it's a, we'll get four pieces of ribbon lining out of one of these pieces of cedar. This is Guatemalan rosewood that they're cutting down into usable sizes and then they're gonna send it over here to a saw called a resaw. And these are gonna get turned into back and sides, so obviously they need to be pretty thin. We'll get, we'll get them down to about 130 thousandths or so before we do some sanding. Some mahogany parallelograms that are used because it's, it's the best shape for maximizing the wood coming out for a neck. You'll see a bunch of drawings on here. There's one, two, three, four, five necks. They'll take this parallelogram over to one of these saws, and now you see the outline on the neck here. So you have, the, uh, you have a raw neck billet that's ready to go onto a CNC machine and be shaped. So after the wood comes in and it's been cut and processed, gone through its drying process, whichever that is, because it can vary by species. Uh, then it comes in here into an acclimating room so that this room is perfect temperature and humidity. Well, a lot of the wood is still going to sit for a period of time before it gets used in production, but a uh, much shorter period of time. So this might be, depending on the species, this could be one month or two months or, or six months worth of a piece of wood. We're also doing a lot of inspection in here for um, any defects or cracks or anything that could be there, and then also graded. You're making sure the, the really high flame co is going on this pile and the, you know, the lightly flamed is going on this pile. We've got some sets here on the, on the table. These are match sets. You can see those come together. Part of that inspection process is they're, they're making a recommendation on every piece of wood as to what size it could be. So we know that this can at least fit a dreadnought. Doesn't mean that we couldn't make a double O out of it, but it at least fits a dreadnought. If it were a little bit longer, we know we could do a 12 fret dreadnought or, or something a little bit bigger. But generally they're gonna be marked out for dreadnought and then they can be remarked for a specific model. We'll do a little of the NAFTA trick so you can see what happens to the, the grain as we get a better sense of what that piece of wood is going to look like under finish. And this will just flash off so it's not damaging the wood. But that's, your, that's your best indicator at that moment. But like you said, the final is where it's really final at because works. this is just one layer. When you get to gloss, that's several mils in thickness and that changes light refraction yep. and the effect of the, the illusion on the wood. So in the old days, they had a little block that would pin on here. I think it had like little, little nails in it and it would pin into here, but they would hold it like this and they would spray it by hand. So on an old guitar, 
there's no finish from about the 15th fret forward or it's kind of blended. And that's why there's finish missing on the, the fingerboard on an authentic. That's an authentic feature. Uh, this, long time ago, somebody decided let's put these in. It goes on a, a rod as it goes through finishing and that way the entire neck and fingerboard assembly are getting sprayed, at, at least on the edges, not on the top. And you can see the rough, uh, the rough diamond. So on the CNC machine, this is roughed in, but it's, it's really rough. This, this entire area, the whole transition from barrel into headstock is pretty rough right now. So this is a lot of the focus on the work that they'll do in the factory when they're sanding yeah, the necks is getting done. that. Yeah, it's all hand done. Just checking for structural flaws in the Just checking for structural flaws, yeah. With the light behind him, the process is called candling. You can see imperfections in the wood, and we have an example here where there's a couple of things. Um, this one would be cut out by the sound hole, so that if it were just that, that would be a passable top. Something down here, outside of the pick guard, a left-handed pick guard and a bridge, eh, it depends on what it is. but. The thing you got to be aware of when you're when you're going through this is you're thinking about what's going to happen 10 steps down the road because mm -hmm. once they start uh, sanding those things could get exposed so it's a visual but it's also a structural if it's something real real serious mm -hmm. and that whole process is done over here so virtually every top is coming through Mary and she's doing exactly what we just saw over there just checking them out now, if, we, if the top doesn't make it through here, we can still use it for other things. So there's back strips and, and things like that. So she's getting the glue in the whole channel. But you're doing the, uh, oh, you are doing the pieces first. Excellent. And this is the bolter on? This is bolter on in this particular one, multiple pieces. Uh -huh. I think she just put two in there, but you know, as, as you've seen, some of the rosettes can be seven pieces. No, yeah, multiply. So they're manipulating all those at the same time. And so all the rosettes, if it's a seven piece, it's seven individual pieces. It's not like a pre-assembled. Seven individual pieces. So some of them are combinations of maybe a thick black, a white, and then a thin black. Um, and that's a particular one. And then you're multiplying those out. So you might have two of those. You might have one of those and something else. Okay, she's putting on the herringbone. Sweet classic look there this is one of those things like many as you've seen before where she's making it look really right. easy so done just like that huh. right <laughs> so there's the the bolterons are those like maple and ebony strips yeah. over there for the wood fiber ebony uh fiber strips little maple strips i don't even want to touch them they're, yeah, so, they're so thin them. so now we're in in bracing and you got these uh, cool forms. I've seen a lot of people using something similar to this, but this bladder, this red material, forms over the bracing after it's been glued in. So this is the top that's complete. She's gonna take that one out, and then new tops will go in. But they have them laid out with um, little blocks to help them know exactly where the bracing's gonna go. There's some little tick marks on there with pencil. So it's just a little dish of glue, right? But there's a knurled wheel on there to help make sure you get the exact amount of glue that you need. You might have a little squeeze out and they'll fix that later, nice. but. And once you put it down in the Easy Bake Oven there, how long does it take for the, for the bracing to set? It's only six, six minutes, minutes, yeah. You can see that at all. It's starting to compress. It's pulling all the air out and pulling that bladder over. And that's, that's pretty much it. Keeping so, the consistency. Yeah, under that yeah, pressure, every, it'll, it'll wow. sit there. So she, she's going to take it out. She inspected it. She'll clean it up a little bit. And then she's going to send it over here to where they're doing shaping. So shaving out the wow. braces. 100% done by hand. 
each model being a little bit different and but she she has an idea in her mind she's going by what what a d28 needs to look like and making sure those are in there but each one's going to be a, a little bit different wow and then she'll pass them over here and you can see some light sanding going on just to, just to clean up some of the the marks from the chisel So this is side bending, and there's a couple things to look at here. These are a lot of the old molds, 00 12 fret mold. They'll use these to help check the bending process. So when they're doing something uh, by hand, they'll bend it over these irons and they'll come back on here. They'll check this inch, and then they'll go back and they'll bend the next part and check this inch here and keep going around the body until it's complete. And then you have bending presses. These are all different size bending presses. A little bit, little bit automated, but the, the operator's still getting the side in there, still using um, heat and steam to allow the wood to So the, this heats it and steams it right in this jig? Right in this jig, and it's programmed for dreadnoughts, uh, rosewood body, or you know, triple O okay. mahogany. So each one's a little bit different. A little different. Manage it differently. So now two sides that are bent are going to get turned into a uh, rim, the beginning of a rim. He's got a uh, D body here that he just glued the rear block into. Again, you can tell he's never done that before. Never done it before. Yes, now, he, now he has one that's complete. Get the pins out. He's cleaned it up so well that he didn't need to do any, any more cleanup there, right? Done. So the end piece has already been grouted out and glued into this body. And now he's uh, shaving it down a little bit to make sure it's flush with the, the rest of the body, cut off the excess. Kerfing getting ready to go in. A little secret too, this is what, like people think they open up their case and they're, they're smelling, you know, the wood, maybe a little bit of the case. It's mostly this, because it's cedar. Unless you get really close to a you know mahogany or rosewood, you're not really going to smell it. But you are you are going to smell the cedar coming out of the out of the sound hole. So this is tricky because you can see from the edge here the dimension of the body in the upper bout versus the lower bout is different. So he's got to manipulate that kerfing a little bit. But all these all these kerfs in here make it flexible this way, but also give you a little bit of a little bit of play this way. And we're at the point now where we're still using clothespins been using these for for ages but starting to filter in and it, it, I think it depends on who's doing it you kind of have a the feel for what's needed so just a little bit now that it's on there a little bit of scoring with a knife to make sure every part seats sits flush yeah what I'm doing here is I'm serializing all of our um, blocks and ID types this is where the serialization starts, right here. And all the pieces start connecting as they leave here. They join each other. I also do a lot of other parts here. And the other laser over there, I'm making bridge plates. Do you notice our logo is upside down and backwards? So when it's inside the guitar and you have people go in with their mirror, they'll be able to read it the correct way. And it's also to try to help with uh, counterfeiting. Now the body's in a form, a casting, that is made for that body. This helps keep it rigid while he's doing this process, and there's also a spacer in the middle. You don't want that body moving around while any of the routing is going on. But essentially, he's routing to allow the, the bracing. He's gonna do a little dry fit right now. The bracing to fit right in there. As you see here, I got a perfect fit. I got just the right amount of wood on wood contact and I got the 
braces to fall right into the channels of the ribbon. I'll do the back and I'll just repeat the process. I got all the back channels notched out here. So this is the phrasing process, essentially routing around the edge of the body in order to accept binding. This is a pretty simple one with one piece of binding, but it could have several pieces of binding going in there at the same time. So this is a really tricky thing to do, moving around that body carefully to making sure that uh, it's nice and even. Is that like a, ukulele, a 45 style ukulele or something? <laughs> no. Which, uh, which model is that? Is that a 5K? It's a 5K. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're also now doing some of this process on this machine. It's able to measure the body. These bodies, even though we carefully built them, we put them in those forms over there, the casting, they're not perfect. It's really difficult to get measurements all the way around here. So this, this machine has the ability to get all those measurements and then accurately cut where it needs to go. At this point, it's actually slower than the hand process, but it's really accurate. So there's little rework when it comes down to the, okay. the next point we're going to see. So the binding process, uh, herringbone guitar, those pieces have been inlaid. And now she's inlaying the antique white Bolteron. But you can see here on the bench is also some maple. So depending on model. Now we're prepping the body for the neck going in. So there's some uh, delicate touches here to the, the neck joint area. And he's gonna do a, a dry fit just to make sure everything's fitting in properly. You can see that the, the heel is oversized, still oversized at this point. That's a uh, next step is he'll cut that off and apply a heel cap and then send these two pieces on to more sanding and finishing. Now we're getting the, the fingerboards ready for the frets. So this fingerboard prep going on here. A little dab of glue, insert a fret, and then they're gonna go into presses to seat the frets properly on both sides. Once the uh, frets have been pressed and dried, they're gonna come into this piece here and get the edges beveled. This does a really nice, clean job of beveling the edges of the frets. This is John, he's been sanding bodies for uh, about a week or two, right? Good. Uh, 20 years. 20 years of sanding bodies, so yeah. There's some great uh, air filtration here. You notice John doesn't have a mask on. He's gonna sand the body on this stanchion that gives him full mobility to uh, any direction that he needs. So he can sand the sides, 
Uh, when he does the sound hole, he'll spin it around, and then he can release the suction, put it on the top, and change over to sanding the back as well. Sanding of the necks, get them in shape for finishing, uh, going around and just managing all the details, but especially the, um, the volutes on the back of the neck. It's a really important piece. Used to be functional, right? Used to be where the neck and uh, headstock actually went together. Now it's an, a nice historical detail. But it's you can only do so much on the CNC machine to get these necks started. This is where the neck really starts to look like it's uh, getting complete. So we're full blown into the finishing process. Guitars everywhere in different stages. You'll still see some of the finish sinking into the grain a little bit. So we're gonna keep building that up. And that's part of the process is that they get sprayed, they come back out, uh, they get sanded, and then they go through that process again and again and again until they're done. So uh, along the tour, this is an area where you'll see probably the most guitars. And it's probably the area that takes the, the longest to complete. So it's a couple of a couple of weeks through the entire process for a fully lacquered guitar. The the curing process for the lacquer doesn't use UV or anything like that. It's just time. It's just time. So some of that's out here. It'll just uh, ambient dry. Some of that is in these rooms here because the lacquer, any finishing is going to have some smell. So prior to having these rooms here, you could really you could really tell what was going on. These rooms help to filter that and. Uh, Keep it clean, keep it a little healthier nice, and, nice. and safer for everybody. What percentage of guitars do you think come through the uh, automated buffing process? Do all of them get a touch from this? For the most part, I think they're all they're all getting a touch from this. Full, full up, gloss. Yep, finish full up gloss by hand. Instruments. Yeah, yep. finish up by hand. The other thing is you can the sensitivity of using nitrocellulose is you can you can burn through it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. You want the the beauty of nitrocellulose is that you can move it around, but you can burn through it easily. So these are programmed to uh, sense pressure and also know what body it's working on. So you'll see that wheel moving back and forth. And then a little polishing compound coming down from the top, just held on there by a couple of suction cups, which is a little, but it works. And it's really helped to expedite efficiency of this process. You need a lot of people to be yeah, and the, by the hand. finishing, you can't, there's no margin of error on yeah. it. You can, if there's an error in the finishing, you can see it. Gloss finish will not allow any lies. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we're utilizing the, the robots, there's still a lot of hand buffing that goes along with this, all the way up until the final inspection process that we'll see later. So this part of the finishing process, we've kind of gone around it and, and a lot of it's in the center of the, the factory. So these guitars are going into um, a robot room. They're getting sprayed a little bit. And the reason that they're on those, those little stanchions is so that the robot can spray the entire body easily. Uh, same thing with necks. We'll see necks on these little um, hooks that go in and that's just to support the, the neck while it's getting sprayed. A little inlay going on these. So previously in the, uh, in the binding area or the rosetting area, they had put a, a filler strip in here. Okay, so the pearl, pearl inlays are done at the... Uh... At the end, yeah. So there'll be a little package that's 45 style that are slightly, slightly formed. They're gonna mm -hmm. kinda, kinda meet the body. And they'll lay them out over the body and make sure they all, they'll fit and mm -hmm. match. And then he'll come back in and start to glue them. And in that process, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, breaking. You might have to break the pearl a little bit.
So we are a little bit of a transition. There are uh, some models, some full dovetail traditional models that are being done with the help of some automation. And it's, it's just one of those things where the amount of labor going into that full dovetail was intense, really intense. So there was a whole department, number of people over there. So we're still doing some of that, but a lot of it is done over here. So D28 is going to be done over here on this automated machine. Now this didn't just come out of nowhere. Uh, we started doing neck fit process on the, we used to have a mortise and tenon, which was this one. And this was a, a neck joint that was being used on instruments uh, built here and also in Mexico. So the X series all the way up through the 16 series and 17s were a uh, mortise and tenon. And then we changed that using the automation to a simple dovetail, which is this here. So much tighter fit than the mortise and tenon. And the advent of using all that technology led us here. So again, you could look at this and say, oh, they're using a machine to make my D28. But the reality is that we proved this out over many, many years and then moved it to the, to the standard line. So a simple dovetail, you'll see it has, if you look at it head on, it's pretty much straight up and down. So when you're referring to a compound dovetail, it fits in a trapezoid shape here, but also it's a wedge shape vertically so that it's twice as secure as a simple dovetail neck joint. That's where it's a big part of the Martin sound is that is that neck construction. All right, so if we look here, we got before the neck is ran through the machine, and there's after. The steeper angle. Yeah, so it all, the yeah, so the probe takes measurements of the width of the fretboard, the angle of the neck. Um, it coincides the measurements with the body, with the top of where the, the shoulders are, and it actually routes out along the heel. It does uh, the undercut, and it cuts part of the heel cap there. If you look at the difference there, this one's not cut yet, and this one is cut, so if you see the it actually routes out part of that, that dovetail there. If you look here, that's how much protrusion you got between the fretboard and the top of the guitar. So there's a pretty big gap there. And then I'll show you one after I run it through. So you look at that. This neck is now married to this body. So this is a great segue into um, what ends up on the hook in the shop at Elderly. Is we, we just talked about the, the dovetail machines that are helping and uh, helping to automate that process. But as uh, Mike explained earlier, there's still additional fittings and this is gonna be the final one here. So this is all done by hand. This is the only way to do this. And he's going to go back in, and, and as much as that machine has helped get this neck fit to this body, there's still some final alterations that need to be made to make sure it's secure. I think that guitar is coming to us. It might be. That's, Look one of our, that. that's one of our anniversary customs right there. Look at that. See it made. Triple O 42. Blammo. Check that out. So they finish the guitar, do the whole deal, and then route out that little bit under the finish so you have wood on wood contact for the to make the, the bridge fit that much more secure. So this is final inspection and um, re-inspection, electronics installation, bunch of stuff going on here. Eddie's working on a uh, pickup system install. What do you got going in there, Eddie? LR bags, Anthem. Nice. So nice got the guitar well protected on the top. We'll get that inserted. Um, a lot of it is in the beginning, getting the strings on, getting the saddle set up and regulated, making sure it plays properly. So everybody in here plays. That's not necessarily the case for the entire factory mm -hmm. and not needed in a lot of situations. 
But uh, over here, you got to be able to play this thing, get it set up, and um, full inspection. They'll do a little uh, polishing as well, and then set it in the case where it'll sit for four days, and then come back out and get reinspected. So some more okay. wait time just to make sure everything's good. So this is our new warehouse, just came into play about two years ago. And this, this warehouse is about the size of the existing factory. So it gives us uh, plenty of room for now and also room to expand. Guitars, guitar, this is all staging. So um, don't wanna give the impression that these are all guitars that are available. But a lot of this area is staging, getting them ready for trucks over here. And then we start to get into cases and wood supply. So this, this is very important. A lot of the woods we use, as everybody knows, are, are scarce or becoming scarce. And if there's a, an availability on a certain type of wood to be able to get it tomorrow, it might not be available in six months. So we need to be able to get it, purchase it when we can. And in order to do that, we need to have space. Previously, we were utilizing a number of spaces around Lehigh Valley. And once we got this warehouse, we were able to condense all of that into one space. So what you see here is a bunch of wood, different species. So this is all, uh, we have some sapelli here. Um, there's rosewoods, there's koa, there's mahogany. All of the woods are in here. So I'm guessing off the top of my head that this is probably twice as much wood, if not more, maybe uh, four times as much when we include the other side as what we actually store at the factory. Uh, that wood is all being processed and ready to use pretty quickly within a couple of months or something. This stuff could sit here for several years, depending on demand and, and what we need to fill in on the other side. And over here we have some more wood. This is a little bit more raw. These are uh, big billets of wood. This stuff over here that's a little bit thinner probably gets cut into backs and sides. Some of these may be neck woods, depending on their dimension. But this is mostly, looks like mostly mahogany in here. We're so glad you joined us on our tour of the iconic Martin Guitar Factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. We really enjoyed learning about the ins and outs of how these guitars are meticulously handcrafted. If you enjoyed that as well, please be sure to subscribe and follow us for more like it. Mm -hmm.